All right, everyone, welcome back for another episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Tuesday, November 5th, 2024. If you've not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up. Like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on CarnivoreTrades.com for swing trading alerts, analysis, and live day trading. Well, it is the Super Bowl or Super Tuesday. There's a lot of market Super Bowls every year, isn't there? Well, we got Super Tuesday here today, and um, tomorrow we got FOMC, but it's not going to be the the meeting won't be until I should say the meetings tomorrow. The results won't be until Thursday. So lots of volatility here, but a lot going on. We'll talk about that Fed meeting in a second. But um, hope you guys enjoyed the special video we did yesterday. Pretty much covered everything I would have covered in the daily video. Obviously, it was a little bit longer, but got through a lot of the points that I wanted to talk about. But um, yeah, spiders here up 1.2, NASDAQ up one and a quarter as well, Dow up one, and then the big winner here today is the IWM, the Russell 2000 up 1.8% here, and a very nice rally here. What is going on? So um, you see, I'm hearing a lot of talk about, oh, the market's pricing in this, the market's pricing in a Harris win, but a Republican House or the Trump win and this, that. Listen, so I've talked about this extensively over the last couple of weeks, and like, again, the market's going to move, certain sectors are going to move really hard, um, and you're not going to know why, right? That's election hedging. There's a lot of event volatility surrounding this specific period, right? So some of those hedges are going to come off. Some of those hedges are going to decay. And trust me, when I see solar higher today, it doesn't mean the market's all of a sudden pricing in a Harris win, right? The market doesn't know. Nobody knows if, if who's going to win yet. So, I mean, it's, you know... It, we still have hours before we're going to get any sort of idea of like certain results that are coming in, really. Um, I mean, there's results in now, but they're not in any way, shape or form definitive. So why did I even bring up the idea of solar? Right. I think solar can rally even if Trump wins. Why? And, you know, chart man Dan and I talked about this yesterday. Look at where it is on the chart. Right. You know, beautiful falling wedge here into a support that took years to break through. Um, so does that indicate to us that the market is pricing in a Harris win or a Trump win? Trump, right? So does it look to you like the downside is factored in? Does it look like the institutions are sufficiently hedged against solar for a Trump win? Yeah, I would say so. So if Harris wins, you're going to get a huge rally. But even if Trump wins, I think you see those hedges come off anyway, and it could still rally anyway. So don't fall in love with, oh, you know, DJT's rallying or oh, Dogecoin's rallying because Elon was on Joe Rogan last night. And the market doesn't know who's winning yet. So we will find that out in the overnight. A lot of stuff going on, though. Um, speaking of DJT, again, probably a local high here, but we'll see if that'll probably rally if Trump wins. Um, don't know if that'll take that high out. But more importantly here, let's just get over to the meat of it. What's happening? Hedges are coming off already. They're coming off early. And I sold you yesterday. Well, I think I said, and I, I didn't say it in the video because I didn't get to the video, but I think that we're going to see max fear before we see a clear winner. Let's take a look at the put call ratio. Um, highest level since October 2021. That's a two. That is very high, folks. Very high. Let's roll the tape back to October 2021. Did we have a melt up afterward? Oh, yeah, we did. Uh, so you're getting to max positioning, right? In fact, I did. we did mention this a little bit yesterday. Uh, we got to max positioning, I think. And, you know, maybe we do get a sell. Maybe we get some volatility tonight. But it looks to me like those hedges that, they, you know, this, this whole unwind is being front ran. And right now, what's the bull bear line? 5,800 ES, right? If I have not been saying that for the last four sessions. We're above that. We get above that yellow line. Um, that's door slammed shut. So forget about all the noise. There's going to be noise, noise, noise. There's going to be, oh, this result. Oh, Iowa did this and Wisconsin the votes, you know, blah, blah, blah. Just focus on the chart. Market doesn't care who wins, right? We don't care who wins. We care about the market's reaction. All right, so we're looking at um, positioning, the, the effect of positioning and the unwind of that more so than we're looking at the actual winner. So don't concern yourself with, oh, if the House wins this percentage of the vote and Kamala get, no, 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 no. What's the market doing here? Forget all that. Forget your bias. Get rid of that. Throw that out the window because it's going to cost you money. So 
So we're just looking at this right now. We're above our bull bear line and you have to give bulls a bias. That now means that the most likely scenario here is if we sell off, we have plenty of room for a higher low, which is something that bulls can work with now. And we have negated that, that level. So that is a reclaim. We get above this one, um, I, you know, we're, look, we're looking at all time highs. That's my base case. SPY 575, again, that's our level. We've been talking about that as well, kind of coinciding with that. And we did close above that here today. Tons, and I mean tons, of open interest and gamma exposure, charm, vanna at 580 for Friday. That's going to be a magnet, I think. Now, let's move on to the Fed meeting here really quick. So if you want, you can go to my page on Twitter. Doesn't matter, but it's right here. Um, again, Nick Tiermos, Fed insider. They, he doesn't say stuff. He doesn't go on TV unless the Fed you know, leaks him stuff. Um, they are going to cut 25 basis points, right? So that to me is um, set in stone. I think it's insane, but um, that is set in stone essentially. Even with yields, you know, rallying back here. So our Fed funds is going to look probably like this. Not a lot of room. But he also said that Powell is going to be kind of quiet, right? So he's not going to steal the show. He, he wants to kind of back off and um, he's not going to make a lot of noise. So I think you're going to have another tailwind for stocks on Thursday after the FOMC, maybe Friday after the FOMC. Um, we may be choppy tomorrow. There may be whipsaw. Um, you could say, well, Aaron, what if there's a contest? You know, what if the election results aren't out right away? Is the market going to crash? I think the market's factored that in. Like, if you can think that the market is going to be, or that the election is going to be contested, I'm sure that the, the uh, trillions of dollars are being managed on Wall Street have factored that possibility in too. So there are left tail hedges here. What's not really hedged here is the right tail, which is to the upside. So that's kind of been my base case. And um, right now we're above that, that bear line. I think we get above back inside of that flag there. Um, we're looking at a very positive bias here by a very positive configuration. I think it's pretty positive anyway. But I would not rule out a steep, deep, steep retrace, right? 2016, we had a 6% drop overnight, you know, in a few hours. And then by the open, it closed green. And then we rallied 30, 40% in the next 15 months. So they're not, you know, the market likes to trap, right? We know that. So we'll be expecting volatility. But right now, we have room for higher lows, and that's what we should be concerned with here. So we covered those levels. Um, again, Spider's holding the 50-day. Technically, we did get the 1,700 tag out of the way. I would have liked to just touch 75, but sometimes it doesn't always happen. Uh, triple Q's here, again, up one and a quarter, like we said. Um, did not close above the high of Thursday, but got pretty close. At the very least, we should back test this rising wedge. Like that's kind of like the last bull bear line there. Um, and the NQ again, we get back and you know, we get back above 2000, you know, 20,005. I think you're, yeah, we're just going to go to new highs. Um, but Aaron, the trend line broke. Don't fall in love with trend lines. All right. I remember people telling me that we were going to crash back in August because this trend line broke. There's another, there's always another one. And even if there isn't, again, like I was pointing out earlier uh, last week, again, you can have a rising wedge breakdown, right? It's not to say that it can't happen, but what if it just does that right afterward, right? So don't fall in love. And what, the reason why I'm bringing this up is look at the Russell. So there's your RTY. Everybody's saying, oh, it's a, it's a breakdown. It's over. And then look at that, the Russell. And it's still going in the after hours. Look at this. It's still going. So IWM, uh, very nice move here. Yeah, 225 now in the afters. There's your, there's your last line. Let's look at the RTY now. Look at it. Yeah, so there's a higher high there for RTY. So we've negated Thursday's price action on the Russell. That's bullish, right? If small caps are leading, not bad. Beautiful pattern there. Dow, we had a diamond here up four dollars. It's a gain of one percent. Um, still got to get back above this uh, this level here. We have not done that yet. 
But if we can close the week back above, I would consider that repaired. SMH at 1.6, still kind of soft, right? It's still not the greatest. And it's still being led by NVIDIA, TSM, and Broadcom. The other names are not as strong. But guess who is leading? Cloud software. Basically just a hop, skip, and a jump from all-time highs. Yet again, no problems. Very strong sector. Bull inside bar on the weekly trying to play out. By the way, uh, before I forget, AI name, Palantir, new all-time high. That did help out the, uh, the tech sector today. It's not a huge company, but it's an AI name, and that does you know, add a tailwind for tech. Other sectors we talked about yesterday, biotech, XBI. Again, I do have some biotech myself. Uh, up 1.4%, nice move there. Again, another ascending triangle. Bull inside bar on the weekly. It's getting there. IBB, same thing, if you follow that. A good setup on those. Dow Transports, knocking on the door. Another ascending triangle. Actually, you got two and really two ascending triangles. One right here and then a bigger one right there. We're knocking on that door. So everything's, you know, while the semis lag, everything else is picking up. By the way, breadth here today, look at that. Um, I think I tweeted this earlier too, like McClellan thrusting hard off the lows. So very strong breadth move. Uh, interest rates again, they were up a lot more earlier and then looks like the short end finished green but uh, 10s and 30s finished down. I think we, yeah, we had an auction and um, bonds got a pretty good bid off the 30 year auction. So again, there's a 10 backing off of that trend line right there. I still think there's, I mean, I know there's plenty of room for higher lows on this though. 30s backing off more. So you don't wanna lose 4.385 on a daily close. But until then, no real problems. XHB up 2.4. Again, got to get back above, you know, 120 and change. There should be some resistance here with the necktie of the 50 and the 20 moving average. But very good move here. They've been leading the last two days. VNQ is also strong the last two days as well. Up one and a third today and inside of that nice channel there. Fins, nice rebound here. XLF, that was weak yesterday. And um, got it close above yesterday's high. Up just under 1%. KRE up 1.72. Again, consolidation here at the top of the range. And again, if this breaks out, it's going to help small caps. So FIN's still pretty strong here. Broker dealer still very strong. Again, new highs are just about to be new highs there as well. Uh, oil strong today, but it did uh, back off the 100. Higher high, though, on the daily. So that may have a little consolidation here over the next couple of days, but... Pretty good price action overall. XLE closing above our 90 level. I would have preferred a little like a close at the high of the day. I mean, it closed, it had a nice pop into the bell, but I just don't love the, um, it's not really conviction behind it. We did reclaim the two, yeah, looks like we reclaimed all the moving averages. So uh, we'll give it that. And then if you look at the weekly, you still got a big fat bull inside bar here. So I know everybody like, you know, freaks out about the, oh, the daily's rolling over. We gotta look at those, you know, zoom out. Look at those bigger time frames. XOP, um, still kind of sloppy, but I still like that one for a recovery as well. I mean, OIH, that broke above our falling wedge and it looks pretty good here. Now it's still gotta get above 280 again. Otherwise we could just, you know, roll right back down, but I, I don't think it will. I think the lows are in for energy. Um, CCJ bouncing, it was down yesterday. See, there's a psych level here and a little bit of support at 50 and then 48.50. URNM, um, plat to negative, NJ. So definitely a little bit of um, money coming out of uranium here. They've had a pretty steep retrace. But again, there is plenty of room for higher lows here. Uh, Nat gas. So inside day there on Z. Steep retrace of the move. Bulls want to see us back above 280. Dollar index, very weak, even with yield strong early. It was, so maybe that was a precursor telling us that the yield pump wasn't going to hold. So pretty good sell there really all day long for the dollar. 
below the 20 and 50 now, or excuse me, the 20 and 200 now. Um, weekly still has plenty of room here, but again, we didn't build support. So it looks like the dollar may be topping out here. Uh, again, we have a Fed meeting coming up, so we'll see. Um, gold's really quiet day, still holding trend though. Again, I still think this wants to go up and test 2850. Maybe the Fed gets us up there, then I think that's it for a while. But we'll see. If there's any sort of time where this is going to start to correct, it's going to be, you know, this week or after this week. Silver still has, you know, it's a little bit of weakness here, right? We have a lower high. Uh, it's going to need to, it's going to need some work here to get back up there and take out that high. So I like silver a little bit less. Um, GDX definitely looks a little bit soft as well. SIL looks okay. SILJ a little bit weaker. So silver is a little bit more mixed than gold. Um, platinum up 1.6. I think that may have to put in a lower high. And I think palladium likely outcome here is a lower high as well. But it could just be a tightening range for a few weeks in order to go higher. So these will likely cool off here for a bit. Copper broke our range. We talked about this extensively. Volatility is coming. Nice pop. And it got back about close about 441. Little follow through here right to that pivot. Backed off there, but nice action there. So now we're going to look for this to get to like 455, 460, and then there's going to be some supply up there. Bitcoin, um, good bounce here. You want to see it stay above this blue line what's the blue line that's the previous all-time high from 2021 the big psych level and i think a weekly close above that would um certainly be a positive because we didn't get that last week but again weekly chart you're just trying to build a, a bull inside bar here no problems doge outperformance here you're welcome elon or i should say you can thank elon for that Um, lastly, marijuana stocks here, MSOS. So this is interesting. Vote Prop 3 today. I, so this is the one area that I think the market is just not prepared for. If that vote passes, um, this chart is not at all prepared for a, a passing of that vote from what I can see. So there is zero hype in this right now. And um, I could see a big move to the upside. Now you would say like, well, maybe insiders know. What do they, they know a vote? They don't know a vote. So I, I think this is the one area where the market's still kind of off sides. What's also interesting is look at some of the Canadian names today. SNDL, what's going on there? That's a huge, I mean, that's like breaking out basically. ACB, Tilray, CGC, these are all much more firm than the American counterparts. TCNNF, big picture is still fine, but really ugly action today. So we'll see how that vote goes tomorrow or later tonight, maybe. But right now, um, spiders, yes, holding up well. Bottom line, we've uh, cleared that bull bear line. And now I think there's definitely room for higher lows here on the hourly, four hour, et cetera. Um, bears, you got to hold this area, otherwise you're toast. So that's what we're looking at here. Again, going to be a lot more volatility, a lot of noise. Again, don't get thrown off by hedges going on and off. That's going to happen. Don't make too much out of, um, you know, don't don't play macro genius here in terms of oh, the, the market wants the house to win. This, forget no, just forget that. Just follow what the price is doing here. And uh, we don't care about the outcome. We just care about the market's reaction. That's the bottom line. So anyways, guys, I'll wrap it up here again. You guys take care. Come find me on carnivaltrades.com. I'll see you guys all tomorrow.